Hello again. I have skipped several weeks of videos, and that's because life and mental recovery mode. I have been playing so much Monster Hunter, it's actually hurting my hands. But since writing is on my to-do list, partially because, you know, Camp Nano coming up, I wanted to talk about writing in Linux. So I switched over to Linux completely in April. Um, Windows started rolling out its uh, Windows 11 upgrades, and like I just got sick of going into the settings every couple of weeks and like saying manually saying no updates do not update to windows 11. it was just getting so annoying and it's gonna happen eventually if i stay on windows so i decided to switch while it was still in the okay area and i had like a bailout period and now i'm just totally on linux now so while i am in the camp of windows 11 is bloated a sketchy a slow and it spies on you um, this is not a Microsoft shaming hour if you use uh, Microsoft. I'm not about that. I only shame iPhone users. I'm just kidding. I don't do that. <laughs> so if you're also on Linux or you're kind of like thinking about jumping ship too, you might be concerned about programs you could use, which is a very legitimate concern. Okay, <laughs> let's just be real. So first and foremost, okay, very important. You can always run Windows in Linux. Uh, it won't be as fast. I actually have it running right now. I could switch my window. It won't be as fast as regular Windows, but here it is. It's just here. I could just arrow over it to um whatever. I got all my stuff here. And it's here in Linux, just running in a window. Yeah, see? So if you ever run into an issue where you absolutely 100% need a very specific program for something and you cannot get it to work in Linux, you can set it up in a virtual machine like this and just run it in a box, you know, a little virtual box. Which is what I do for Scrivener, Plotter, and um, Pro Writing Aid. Unfortunately, they only work in Windows. Now, um, I am doing this because I paid for all of these. I, I'm not on subscription. I paid the lifetime fee for um, Pro Writing Aid and Plotter and then Scrivener you just buy. So I'm like, I'm not wasting my money. I'm doing this. So I still have to suffer through Windows 11 a little bit, but only when I'm writing and I could just like kill it anytime I want. And if it breaks, I'm not losing anything because all of my stuff is backed up in Dropbox. So you can see it's not as fast. Just me moving this window around. You can see the lag. Although it is downloading something and Scrivener is also opening too. So that's contributing. But yeah, it, it is slower. But it all works perfectly, just like it would in Windows. So, put that to the side. Let's say we don't do that. What could we do? Anything that you use that works on a browser works totally fine. So that's biggest one, Google Docs. You could still use that in Linux. And what else is there? There's um, ProWriting A's web client. That also works perfectly fine. Uh, there's Campfire Blaze, Calmly Writer. It's probably something else I'm forgetting about, but anything online, totally fine. That rhymes. Oh, geez. But let's say you prefer like Microsoft Word. I really hope you can't hear my air conditioner kicking in. Sorry. Then you could use LibreOffice. I actually used that while I was still in Windows because Microsoft trying to get a subscription fee out of me. Nope. LibreOffice is basically just Word. It opens Word documents. It saves Word documents. Some people say that there are features that don't exist in LibreOffice that exist in Word, which I'm sure is true, but I have not encountered them yet. I use it for basic things, and I'm pretty sure it'll be fine for writing. Um, I think where you might run into issues if you do like comments and track changes, they theoretically work. But I see people have problems with it, so that could be an issue. So there is another one called OpenOffice you can also use, but I don't use it because LibreOffice works fine for me. But OpenOffice seems to have better compatibility with comments and track changes. But, you know, my comments remain the same. It's They're, they're very similar programs, so either or, you know. I like LibreOffice. Check this out. Just think about the last time you opened Microsoft Word, all right? Envision this in your mind, okay? Now, boom. See how fast that opens? Um, let me, let me, like, make something super huge. 
Okay, let's copy that. Let's paste that in. You see how fast it pasted in 56,000 words? Okay, let's save this. Okay, file, save. And I have multiple things running right now. I got a video recorder. I got an audio recorder. I got Firefox open with like 30 tabs. Let me see. Uh, I can... Yeah, whatever. Save. Let's close. Let's just close this. Okay. Let's open that again. Boom! It's nice. I like it. But then again, you might use things that I do not use. So you could run into issues with it. I think if you're doing uh, formatting stuff like uh, tables, maybe you might have an issue, but I don't think you will. Now, if we're talking programs that are devoted to writing, not just like general word processing stuff, we do have a really interesting one called Manuscript, which I will open. Where are you? Now, manuscript, I'm still, you know, trying to poke around at it. But as far as I can tell, it's like, um, kind of approaching the area of being able to replace Scrivener and Plotter. Not quite. It's not quite there. But it's approaching that territory. Okay, so we got a title, generic book. You can fill out all this stuff to subtitle series, volume, genre, license, blah, blah, blah. Summary. Do your summary right here. I know that's the, that is definitely something that we have to do as writers, which is very painful. But it'll be right here. You just copy paste it. You can put all your character info. It's got a whole bunch of things you could fill out for them. Motivation, goal, conflict, epiphany, plots, plot lines, world info, outline, do outline. Where we filled, this is the thing we filled out in the beginning. Blah, blah, blah. Editor. Here's where you actually write. Actually, you know what? I still got that thing on my clipboard. 56,000. Boom. You see how fast that pasted? Search. You can have cheat sheet. They have notes, like in Scrivener, how it has that little side thing you do. It's like the essentials from Scrivener and the bones of Plotter kind of together i'm sure there's another program out there that's closer to what this is but i don't use that program so <laughs> i'm just saying plotter and scrivener but anyway it's got all your world stuff in here and you could write in it and you could import as an epub docx html blah 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 all that stuff obviously not as many features as scrivener but i think it works Maybe the um the place where it gets a little uh weird is formatting the text. It's in a menu. Like it's not just here. You gotta actually go edit, format, blah blah blah, and like choose this. Also, I don't know how to change the font. I can't figure that out. But it is a novel editing thing, novel writing thing that works. And, you know, I don't really think there's anything wrong with it. You can change the scene. You can compare scenes. It's got the bones. You could use it. So here's actually a plus for, I guess, for people like me, is that you can, uh, let's say you lose manuscript, all right? You can't access it anymore. You could still get your stuff. Like, you can unzip the file, like it's a zip file, and just go through the scenes and stuff. It's actually a lot easier to do than a Scrivener file because it's labeled properly. Book one, section one, look, I found that instantly. Scene five, where's scene five? Chapter one, scene five. Boom. Very easy to find. Whereas Scrivener, if you lose Scrivener and you got to recover your crap, it's ridiculous trying to find what is what in there because they have gibberish names. So here it is, files, data, and then look at all this. Look, what is this? Okay, those are all my chapters. What chapter is it? I have no idea. Look, it's just content. I got to actually open up each individual one and try and figure out what it is. So that's a plus in manuscript's favor, okay? Usability. Your stuff, I almost cursed. Your stuff isn't <laughs> hidden under gibberish. 
you can actually find what you need to find if you lose the program. So Manuscript has a lot of customization. On the website, you can see that they got timelines. You can do... Hey, you're moving way too fast. I mean, it's got a lot of stuff in here, which I will probably not investigate further because I have Flutter. <laughs> However... I think it's a good program. Now moving on, there's also Focus Raider, which I believe is also available in Windows, which basically is a full screen thing. You open it, this is all you can see, and you could customize it. You see tools, themes, where are you? There you go, themes. You can do a theme, space, we're in space. You can make your own theme. Untitled, that's uh... I don't know. Okay, look. I got my own theme here. I hope there's nothing sketchy in the background. Cyberpunk is very sketchy. Okay, but there's no boobs anywhere. Okay. And you could just type. Blah, blah, blah. Dip, blah. There you go. I pasted the same warm episode in here. And it's a distraction free writer. You could save it as a text file. Uh, XML, rich text, plain text, blah, blah, blah. So you can't save as Word, but like Word will open these files. So that one's kind of fun. I might need that, honestly. And obviously you can customize it a lot. Like the one I had right there was plain white, sharp corners, completely opaque. This one is semi-transparent, rounded corners, shadow. Like you can do a lot of stuff customize your uh, distraction-free writing environment. That's good for you. Now, last up on the list of like usable and useful programs is Novel Writer. I feel like I've sunk down in the frame. Now, um, if you have Ubuntu, you could use this guy. It seems to be also another Scrivener clone kind of thing. And from what I could tell, it definitely has more formatting options than Manuscript. I have not installed this, I have not tested it because it's really, it's made for Ubuntu and I have Fedora and I don't feel like um, compiling it from source just for a video. But it looks good, so I'm talking about it. It's also available on Windows and Mac if you want to test it out, not on Linux. So it's got Project Outline, just like Scrivener. It's got um, a lot more form. You could actually change the font in this one. Um, it's got a dark theme, blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of stuff you could use. Maybe you might run into issues when you're going to like format for, um, you know, KDP and stuff like that. Honestly, I don't have much to say about that because I've never done it. But like these things can export to EPUB and all sorts of different formats. I'm thinking that, uh, maybe Novel Writer would be easier to use as far as exporting. Manuscript, I had to download a separate dependency file so that I could export as an EPUB and stuff like that. So Novel Writer, probably better. So those were a couple writing programs you could use in Linux. Here's the Shyamalan twist at the end. You could also use them in Windows. And they're all free. Like literally, I installed them just for this video. I'm going to delete them afterwards. <laughs> they're just... They're free, open source. They're still getting updates. It's all good. Sometimes when you install things on Linux, you got to fight with it. Dropbox took a while to get set up properly. It was a pain in the butt. So was NordVPN. NordVPN was also a pain in the butt. And guess what? NordVPN also had me losing my mind for like three days because I turned the kill switch on, which basically it kills the internet when it loses connection, when NordVPN loses connection to a server. But uh, it killed the internet so well that it wouldn't connect back on its own. Like, it, it <laughs> it's not supposed to do that. <laughs> and I thought that my internet was broken for like two days. I was losing my mind and it was all NordVPN's kill switch. Joys of Linux. Seriously, if um if you're not into troubleshooting your own stuff in like, you know, command line stuff like this. Maybe Linux is not for you because, you know, stuff doesn't go right. I feel like everyone who has Linux has broken their system in a very unique way, kind of like a thumbprint, and uh, it just works still, you know? <laughs> 
But um, if you are on the Linux bandwagon, you can still use a whole bunch of cool programs. Don't let that be the stopping block, all right? Especially because you could always, you know, fall back on fake windows in a little window like this. Anyway, that's my video for the week. Unsure if I will be uh doing a video next week because life is still crazy. I will be writing. I will be forcing myself to write. Um, I just think I need to kick myself in the butt, get out of this funk, and you like forge forward. There's a time for chilling, and then there's a time for pushing yourself forward. I'm in the pushing myself forward phrase. So, I'll see you at some point, maybe next week, hopefully next week. There's two books I have that I need to read. I might be talking about them. Anyway, see ya. Good luck with your writing. Bye-bye.